Spring is in the air, my friends. Unless, of course, you live in the Northern Hemisphere, in which case it's autumn and, uh, of course, winter is coming in a few months. But it's a beautiful, beautiful uh, spring day here and the flowers are in bloom in my garden and uh, there's a, just a lovely, gentle breeze coming through the window and I feel good. I am, of course, Oliver Joyce from Whiskey Bar Studios and welcome to another Swords and Sandals developer update. Today, we're going to talk about what I've been working on this last week, which is the updated shop system. It's going to be a fairly short video, but I just wanted to show you a little bit of gameplay from the shops. Uh, I showed you bits and pieces before, but I've, uh, I've sort of tweaked it a bit. And I'm also going to show you dual wielding, at least in terms of equipping and unequipping uh, multiple weapons. So that'll be something fun. And we're going to talk about uh, a new system in the game, which I've just started to implement, which is equipment burden. But let's jump into it with uh, the shops and we'll talk a bit more about it as we go. Okay, so what we have here is the shop system. Uh, the battle caravan as it's better known. We have an armorer, a weaponsmith, tavern, training area, and enchanter. And these won't all be available to you at the start of the game. We're going to start off with just the weaponsmith early on and then the armor will join us shortly after and then a little bit further in our travels we'll meet these other characters who will of course uh you know aid us in our quest now i'm going to show you the armor today uh you can hear in the background some really cool music from electro uh, alex Tassani, who's done uh several of the tracks for this game this is quite a nice marketplace theme one of several that will randomly appear during the game and you know right now it only plays once but i'm gonna have it sort of fade in and fade out later on that only appears there and you get stopped but it'll sort of come in and go uh, so it doesn't sound you know, too repetitive, but it adds a nice little touch of ambiance to the game. And you'll also see different times of day, the sh uh, lights will go on on the shops uh, at night time, that kind of thing. The forge, of course, is always uh, lit. Here we go to the armor. This is Thargan the armor, you know, our good friend from Sword and Sandals 2, who has uh, still as bad a temper as ever. And he's also had a bit of work done. He's run into the automatons and replaced his arm. Uh, we'll find out why he's replaced his arm with this robotic sort of cybernetic forge arm and his eye too, um, you know, through the course of the adventure. Down the bottom here, you see a bunch of panels. For the armorer, the forge will be available, learn skill, sell and buy and talk. He won't be able to enchant. All these buttons are showing right now, but I'm gonna sort of change that to be more, sports, more specific to each shopkeeper. Uh, later today I'll be fixing that up so when you learn a skill these are basically like trainers in games like World of Warcraft and that kind of thing that's where you learn your skills so you'll be able to learn you know whirlwind or you know barbarian smash that kind of thing from these guys different to talents which are things like you know learning getting more proficient at two-handed weapons and that kind of thing uh, learn when you level up but you can buy these skills from trainers as you go right now all we can do is buy and sell Let's buy something. What are you after? Speak loudly and clearly for an old timer, he says. Now, I want to sort of uh, clean this a little bit up as well. I want to move, make this a little bit more of a long bar here, this speech bubble, so I've got more room up the top. Because what I want to also show you, you, if we click on the new bandana, that is available there. But when you equip a, a second item, it'll appear here. And I actually want to show you a full version of that here with the item so you can actually see because a lot of people have said oh, I want to see what the item looks like in a larger um, capacity because if you click on here you can only see a sort of cut off version but we'll show you the full version of it there I'll probably work on that later today let's buy ourselves a noob bandana you can see it equips right here and if I was to buy a brigand helmet you can see the comparison there it shows you both helmets this thing weighs three that one weighs one and max armor 39, max armor 13. Your little up arrow or down arrow, sort of red or green arrows to show you the comparison between the two. All these prices right now are super inflated because I'm sort of working out the inflation and the cost of everything right now. But you can kind of scroll up and down with your mouse wheel to see more powerful items and how much they weigh. Weight is a new thing in the game and uh, it comes into equipment burden. So let's check out equipment burden right now. It's basically encumbrance if you've ever played Dungeons and Dragons. So by that I mean uh, when you're fighting, the lighter you are, the more effective you are, uh, the more you can move around basically. So for most gladiators, 
this is fine. If we give ourselves a helmet, that's fine. We get ourselves noob shorts, no problem. But when we start wearing heavier armor, if I was to give myself Halon 4 leg guards, right now, of course, we've got tons of money as well because it's a debug gladiator. We're going to start slipping into... No, we're still that. So 40% burden, no penalties. But if I were to buy myself a heavy brigand buckler... Okay, now we've tipped the magical 50% burden mark. So at 60% here, our move speed is halved because it makes sense that, you know, when you're wearing heavy equipment, you can't move as fast. And if we were then to go, let's chuck on a brigand vest, which is also heavy. We're now at 80% and we can not jump because it's too heavy for us. Let's uh, really tip it over the, the scales now. Brigand shoulder guards, bam. 100% burden, essence recovery is halved. We can still buy more than that if we wanted to. Um, a little error there, I can't actually click on that button there. Okay, I gotta fix that up. Um, what would tip us over? If we were to change our helmet over to an Ajantian helmet, great, you can still be over. You can have you know more than 15, whatever it is, but you know, you're gonna have some issues there. Um, Okay, that will essence recovery halve means that when you rest, you uh, only get half the stamina back, the essence back that you normally would. So there'll be penalties. And I took this from Dark Souls, which would allow you to wear equipment and stuff that was heavier than your strength. But, um, you know, there will be penalties involved for that. How do you get uh, this number up? Well, equipment is tied to vitality and strength. So when you boost your strength, boost your, boost your vitality, that number will go up and you'll be able to wear heavier gear. It makes sense that, you know, if you want to be a mage pumping all your points into intelligence and that kind of thing, you shouldn't be able to wear heavy armor and that kind of thing without having, you know, the appropriate strength. So uh, you'll be able to tailor your character as much as you want. And you can still wear this heavy gear, just you won't be able to move around as much. So you want to get wear the heavy gear, get stronger. All right. So you can also sell your items. We can sell this brigand buckler and notice this burden goes down sell the vest goes down as well sell the noob shorts there you go we can also sort our armor by everything um, these are the things we've got these are our items we can sell back to him we've got a gladius got a short bow anything that doesn't have a portrait yet has a little red mark there can't sell the shank of course because the shank is very much um, tied to you know our character you have to have a weapon in the game essentially all right you can also look at things in a little thumbnail view, which is just a nice handy way of looking at things. You can check out. These are the helmets that don't appear yet. You don't have um, portraits of them yet. I'm also going to make it so uh, shopkeepers only have a limited amount of stuff. Each week that stuff will replenish and you're not going to see all the gear at all times. So even though right now in debug mode, we can see all these different helmets and things like that. Uh, at first, you only have to see a few things. There's also going to be some really cool things to do with blueprints and forging your own cool stuff, which will appear in a future video. Let's exit the shop right now. Let's check out our character. I'm going to now also show you dual wielding. So right now we have a um, spatha equipped, which is sort of like a nice, uh, decent, medium-sized sword. There's also a Roman gladius, which I've uh, given us earlier. This does more damage. We could equip this in our main hand if we wish. And there it is. But I've given us the dual wielding skill as well. So with dual wielding, you'll also see uh, equip alt hand. That button won't appear unless we have dual wielding, but let's check it out. Cool. Now we have it in our off hand and we can unequip the spatha if we want. And unequip the gladius. The shank will appear there. So let's put the, that back there. Gladius, alt hand. That kind of thing. If we wanted to equip a hook sword, which is a two hand weapon that does more damage than both of those, you can see now it says equip in both hands. And his pose changes as well. You can see now he's holding the hook sword in both his hands. Uh, that's kind of cool, I thought. Um, you'll have different animations for, you know, one hand versus two hand and, you know, different holding animations, different attack animations, that kind of thing. Um, this is our equipment panel up here, the character screen panel, uh, vital statistics like your level, your power score, how much health you've got, that kind of thing, um, your essence, your armor, vital stats over here, um, you know, 
this will represent sort of boosted stats that are you know mag magically enhanced by items and that kind of thing. Uh, there will be much more detail in the stats in this panel here. It'll show you why bonuses work, how much damage you do against you know different armor types and that kind of thing. And of course our talents panel over here, which I showed you in a previous video, that kind of thing. It's kind of cool. Still working description dis descriptions for all, all of them. Uh, I was supposed to do that that week, but then I got caught up in the shop system. Achievements don't work yet. That's our settings for the game. But yeah, I really like the UI. It's you know it's a work in progress. It's coming along. There's lots to show. Um, but you know this is quite a nice shop system. I feel like the equipment system is much nicer than in previous swords and sandals. And of course our armor can be unequipped like that as well. Shows you what's equipped and what's unequipped. Nice and simple, right? There you go. That's the shop system at present. There is still lots of work to be done on this and all the other systems in the game. But, you know, I enjoy showing you these little weekly updates to give you a taste of, you know, what's coming in Sword and Sandals Immortals. And, you know, uh, just to get your feedback on what you like, what you don't like. You know, not all can be changed, but, you know, this is still quite a malleable, um, you know, development at the moment. Uh, I'm really having fun with this part of the game. I do like bringing in all the systems. I put stats in for all the armor and weapons the other day, and uh, you know it starts to feel like a real inventory system. Once I get the blueprints in the game too, that's going to be really fun because that will allow you to sort of forge Diablo-style weapons. You know, you know, star-forged axe of the bear, that kind of thing, and that's when you really get customized weapons and armor, and you'll be able to put gems in them and that kind of thing later on. Later on. For now, uh, it's still a shop system, and I'm. I'm working on the jewel wheel. The jewel wheel you can equip and everything right now. It doesn't do anything in battle. Uh, it's Thursday now, so I probably won't tackle that till next week. I want to sort of clean up the shop this week and get that all working nicely. And then on to next week, we'll uh, get back into combat. As always, I want to give a huge shout out to my uh, Patreon supporters who uh, you know, help make all this development possible. Uh, you guys are the true gladiator heroes. And of course, I salute you. Those friends are Jandaku Chanahi, uh, Noah Gudajan, Nico, Exarp Omega, Ilya Gurovich, John Stayskal, Jeffro of Hex3D, Davi, Pialo34, Body X, Michael Loda, Yunas Yalo, Hopeless, Chris Lopez, and Daniel Funches. Thanks, everybody. I thank you, and our good friend The Armor thanks you. And he says, if you would like to be a Patreon, that would make my <coughs> day. Yeah. If you want to support me on Patreon, there is a link below. It's, of course, completely optional, and uh, all fanship is appreciated. But if you want to go the extra mile and be part of this game and other games, join up. Join now. Join a good cause. You know, well, relatively. It's all relative, isn't it? Uh, that's really it for today. Um, I want to show you the Immortals trailer, just uh, so for those who haven't seen it. That's what we kind of... Uh, do every week, so um, let's check it out. Sword and Sound Immortals. Uh, this is, uh, of course, already old footage because this footage is from a few months ago, um, the last month or so. But you can wishlist the game on Steam. Wishlisting really helps, and of course, this development will, you know, go in leaps and bounds as the development continues. Um, I'll show you more and more footage from it. Check out the Steam page and do make sure you wishlist it. Um, it's much appreciated. We're actually building up wish lists quite quickly, which is fantastic. I'm already at uh, nearly, I think, 1,450 at the moment. Um, it's about a third of where I want to get to, just under a third. If we can get to 5,000, that's the magic number. That will really be the magic number. And, of course, uh, you know, like, subscribe, all the rest, you know, or not. Thanks, everybody, for joining me this week. And until next week, my friends, I salute you and bye for now.